Hey there guys, it's your boy Nick in the ASMR Nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today we're taking a look at and giving a listen to a brand new microphone from a company called Fifine. Fifine. You might recognize that name because I reviewed one of their microphones here on the channel before, their K670 microphone, and I found that it was actually really good for the price. It was good value. Uh, it sounded pretty good, and it was built very, very solidly. Impressive build quality for the $50 to $60 price range that it occupies. Today, I'm taking a look at Fifine's latest model, the K678 microphone. This is a USB microphone aimed squarely at streamers and podcasters and those kinds of content creators. Uh, it comes in a bit more expensive than the K670. The K678 is priced at about 80 US dollars and it's aimed, I would say, pretty squarely at taking on microphones like the Blue Yeti and the Yeti Nano. The styling is very reminiscent of the Blue Yeti. Uh, and at the price point, it does sit a little cheaper than some of those competitors. So it will be very interesting to see how it stacks up. It has uh, a single capsule with a cardioid uh, response pattern. Uh, and being USB, it has an analog to digital converter built into it. Uh, and it's capable of recording at up to 48 kilohertz sampling rate with 16-bit bit depth. So that's fairly competitive around that price point. Judging by the specs that Fifine has provided, it looks like it's uh, using a different capsule than the K670 that came before it. So I am interested to hear how it sounds, how it performs. And although this is aimed at content creators recording voice primarily, uh, this is an ASMR channel, of course. So I will be testing it out with a variety of ASMR triggers. And as a matter of fact, Fifine was kind enough to send over two K678s for us to test here in stereo mode, so we'll be doing some ear-to-ear -ear ASMR triggers of various kinds with it to see if it's appropriate as a entry-level microphone for those who maybe don't want to have to buy uh, an audio interface and, you know, mess around with XLR connections and stuff like that, who just want to be able to plug the mics into their computer. I'll be using a piece of software called Voice Meter uh, to plug in a pair of USB microphones and map one to each channel and get the stereo imaging that way. Uh, I will be stacking them up against the Blue Yeti, of course, so that you can hear what that sounds like, but also the Rode NT1A microphones that you are listening to right now. The Rodes are a fair bit more expensive, but I always find it to be a very fun comparison because oftentimes these cheaper microphones come a lot closer in terms of sound quality than you might expect. So I'm going to be doing a, a bit of a, a blind kind of test here. I'll talk about it after we've done the unboxing, but you'll get to listen to both sets of microphones and I'll have you guess which you think is which. It'll be fun. I want to see if you think you can do it. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Fifine's K678 USB microphone. And here we have Fifine's K678 microphone in box. Now, I should point out that because this is such a new product, I don't think this is the final retail packaging. Because you see, we have this box here with presumably a microphone and such inside. But uh, we've also got this piece right here. 
this is the base for the microphone and these came ships together in just a plain brown cardboard box from Fi Fine and I don't think that's how it's going to ship to consumers. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if it did. So I'll very quickly show you this base for the microphone here. Uh, this, as I said, came just sort of separately and loose in this box. And this thing is solid metal. It's got a matte black finish. It is very weighty. Very solid feeling. It's got rubberized feet on the bottom here. And it's got these uh, rotating knobs and threaded screws on the inside here, which undoubtedly uh, screw into the microphone body. Really not much to see there other than that, um, but it feels very solid and quite heavy. Like I said, it came separately from me. I suspect this will all come together in one box in the final retail package. Let's see what we've got inside this little white box, shall we? It says, of course, Five Fine Technology on the box here. And uh, I don't think it says anything on the back. No, nothing. Made in China on this side and some certifications. And Fifine's website and contact. Basically nothing else. Which is why I didn't really give you the customary tour around there. So there's not much to see. foam or anything on the lid, but we have plenty of packing foam in here. We have a little insert with the company website, social information, Facebook and such. The Five Five Facebook is quite active, I've noticed, and they tend to do quite a few giveaways and contests and things, so it might be worth following if, uh, if that's your thing. On the back here it says, Dear Sir or Madam, thank you. Thank you for being our valued customer. We hope to meet your needs and impress you with our customer experience. Demonstration video is available online. Facebook and email contacts. It says here, easy to get an upgraded two-year warranty by signing in Fifine Web. <laughs> so I guess you can sign up on their website for a two-year warranty, which is nice. I think the default is one year, but you can extend that if you so choose. A little bit of packing foam. And then everything else is just kind of stuck in here. Again, not sure if this is final retail packaging, but I'm betting it's not. So here we have the microphone itself, which is really heavy. And it's just kind of nestled in this, this foam packing, which is uh, not the most robust, but probably does the trick at this point anyway. Uh, it does appear to have arrived unscathed at least. Another piece of foam packing on the bottom, and uh, one of these cables, which is, uh, honestly, the Fifine's cables are really nice. They are very heavy gauge. They are PVC black plastic. Uh, on one end, we've got uh, a micro USB connector on this microphone, which is interesting, because on the previous one, it was USB type B. This is just, uh, standard micro USB. And on the other end we have Fi Fine branding and USB A plug with a little cap. Uh, these are nice little metal uh, housings on each end. 
which is really pleasing to see. Overall, it's nice and uh, just a very heavy gauge quality feeling cable. Again, uh, way nicer than I'd expect for products in this price range. I was similarly impressed uh, the last time I uh, unboxed a Fifine product. So the overall feeling of quality and solidity seems to be borne out here as well. Let's take this out of its soft touch plastic bag. All right. And here we have our little capsule style microphone. Isn't it cute? <laughs> uh, now this is very clearly made in the style of a Blue Yeti-like microphone, and it's no secret that Five Fine is very much aiming to uh, compete with the Blue Yeti and similar. Um, this is made of solid metal. Uh, it is very weighty. Most of the weight resides in the bottom, although uh, even the top, the grill, is solid metal. Here we have a couple of welcome controls. We have microphone volume, an analog dial here. It says mic underneath. Underneath that, we've got the headphone out volume control, which is also controlled with an analog dial. And a little headphones icon underneath. Around the sides, we have uh, these holes here, which clearly correspond with those over on the base we took a look at a second ago. Uh, I will install this on its base in a moment. Then around the other side, we have the Five Find branding, and we have a mute button, and an indicator LED, which I suspect shows whether it is recording or muted. Uh, another screw hole here. And then on the bottom, we've got micro USB connector, a threaded mounting hole, so you could in theory put this on a some kind of shock mount or microphone stand with a corresponding threaded uh, mount. I, this looks like maybe it's quarter inch or so. Honestly not quite sure. Uh, and then here we have the headphones out. So uh, just like uh, this microphone's predecessor, which I reviewed, uh, as well as the Blue Yeti and such, uh, you can plug in your headphones to the audio out jack to get a zero latency uh, output from this microphone, which is great for monitoring your own vocals and such. While recording, it'll also pass through system audio, which is nice. Then we've got some basic little certifications there. And that's it. Um, it's a really simple looking and very solid feeling a little microphone. <laughs> I know I keep saying it, but uh, the first time I, I reviewed a Fifine microphone, I was blown away by the build quality at the price point. And once again, they have outdone themselves here. This just feels incredibly, incredibly solid. It's just a s solid chunk of metal. nothing hollow about it. Very nice. Okay, and it's all in this matte black, uh, which doesn't seem to be picking up fingerprints too easily, so that's a good sign. Let's just mount it now on this base, which I think should be a fairly straightforward process. I'm just going to push out these these here uh, threaded uh, 
uh, knobs and then I'm going to just thread them into place like so on one side gives you a better view of it here and uh, like so hmm. I'll have to back this off a little bit to give me enough room or enough uh, play for this to bite over here there we go And the microphone basically just sits there, oops, between these two threaded knobs. And as I'm tightening them up, it's kind of pulling in the sides of the stand. Now, this is a very solid mounting system. Uh, it looks nice, which is great. I'm not sure if I have this the right way around occurs to me you probably address the microphone on this side. You probably speak into this side. I will double check that when I start recording. Um, and I'm not sure which way it's supposed to be facing outwards, if that makes sense. Probably I should have done it the other way around, but it doesn't matter too much. There was no product um, manual included in this box, as you probably saw. <laughs> Again, I suspect that that's because this is a early version of the product. Uh, I am quite confident the retail version uh, with all the attendant packaging will come with a user manual. I will clarify that though uh, with the Fifine representative I've been speaking with. Uh, but uh, the previous Fifine microphone, the K670 that I reviewed, did come with a manual, as one would expect for a retail product. But anyway, uh, this is adjustable, as so. And you can loosen these off or tighten them down, depending. If you want it to stay in place, you can just tighten them down. You'll see where you put it. Um, but what this is not is height adjustable. This is not height adjustable, whereas actually the mounting solution for the K670 was height adjustable. So it's too bad that you lose that functionality, although with the K670 the height adjustability was pretty limited. Um, so it's not a huge loss, um, and like I said, this does feel like a very solid and secure mounting uh, method, you know, stand situation. Um, but, uh, yes, regrettably not height adjustable. Alrighty, well, I think we've looked at this thing sort of backwards and forwards and from all the angles. There's not a whole lot else to see here. It's a very simple product, honestly, in its design. I think it looks awesome. I think it feels awesome. I think uh, Five Fine has done it again with uh, a really, really solid feeling and a uh, uh, sharp looking product um, that, you know, has build quality that's just well beyond uh, what you would otherwise expect in this price range. But build quality is only part of the question, as you know. More important is performance. So it's time to test out the Fifine K678. So to evaluate the K678, I'm going to be testing it out ASMR style. Now that's not really what this microphone is made for. The K678 is a mono microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. There's no stereo imaging or anything like that with just one microphone. Um, it's made primarily for, for voice, for podcasting, for streaming, those kinds of things. But this is, of course, an ASMR channel, so that's the context in which I would like to test it out. And Five Fine agreed to that, and they kindly sent over a pair of K678s so that we can test out two of them and get proper stereo sound, which from my perspective, at least, is 
um, important for the ASMR experience. Now, uh, the K678 obviously is a USB microphone, and so in order to uh, use two of them at once, you have to get a little bit fancy. Uh, there's a piece of software that you can download. It's free. It's called Voice Meter. Uh, that's Meter, M-E-E-T-E-R, Meter, Voice Meter. And uh, it allows you to set up inputs from two separate USB microphones and set one as the right channel, one as the left channel. And then you can pipe that out to, say, Audacity, which is what I'm going to be using to record, uh, and record in stereo with one microphone for each channel. Uh, so that's kind of a workaround that allows you to use a pair of USB mics for stereo audio imaging. Uh, because of that, because they're USB mics, I'm recording on my laptop. Uh, normally, when I record with my my regular microphones, the Rode NT1A microphones, which is what you're hearing right now. Uh, I record on my Zoom portable recorder. It doesn't make any noise. It's silent. My laptop does have a little bit of fan noise, even when it's just idling. And so um, you might hear that very faintly in the background during the tests. So for these tests, I'm going to be stacking the Fifine K678 up against my Rode NT1As. And I must stress, this is a slightly unfair comparison right out of the gates. Uh, the Fifine K678 comes in around $80 per microphone. Uh, the Fi or the uh, pardon me, the Rode NT1As clock in around $200 per microphone. So kind of a, a different ballpark, but not as different as some microphone comparisons we've done in past. The K678 is getting up there in price towards the more premium end of things. Um, so uh, the way I did this last time, you might recall, was I had the microphones in frame, I covered them up with black boxes so that you couldn't see what the microphones were. And I did a series of paired ASMR trigger sounds tests uh, where I would do a certain trigger with one set of microphones and then the other. And then I got you to try and guess whether it was the expensive Rhodes or the, the uh, more budget-friendly Fifine microphones. I'm going to do something similar here, but I'm modifying it a little bit. First of all, the microphones are going to be out of frame, just like they are right now, so you won't actually see them. Also, instead of doing one trigger with one mic and then the next, and, and switching back and forth like that, last time I think some people found it a little bit confusing, because they thought that the roads were always mic A, for instance, and the five finds were always B, or, or vice versa. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the triggers with one set of microphones here, and then all the triggers with another set of microphones. And then once I've done it all, I'll get you to, to make your guess. Obviously, I can't hear you make your guess, but I'll give you a moment to think about it, and you can say it in your own head. You can put it down in the comments if you really want. So, oh, and just to be equitable, I will have my laptop running in the background, even when I'm recording with the Rode microphones, just so that it's kind of as similar recording conditions in terms of ambient sound as I can possibly be. This is not a perfect or objective test. This is a subjective test at best. And of course, as I said, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison, at least I think it will be, but we'll find out, I guess, when we listen back to the audio. I will leave the audio raw. Normally I do a little bit of polishing, a little EQ, a little bit of very subtle noise removal. I will not be doing that on the audio from the mic tests. I want you to hear the audio as it is coming out of the microphones raw. Okay, that was a lot. I think I've explained everything that you need to know, so 
without further ado, let's get on with the microphone tests. The first trigger is soft speaking. Soft speaking. Ear to ear. Soft speaking. I'm in your left ear. Left ear. Left, 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 left ear. Moving across, center, 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 to your right ear. I'm in your right ear, speaking softly at the microphone, away from the microphone. At the microphone, away from the microphone. Moving across, 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 at the microphone, away from the microphone at the microphone, away from the microphone, back to the center, 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 I'm speaking up close, 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 close to the microphones, very close indeed now, and then I'm moving back, 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 way back, I'm going to use all the space I've got here, speaking away from the microphones, coming Close, 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 close. Back, 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 back. Close, 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 close. Back, 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 back. Trigger number two is going to be whispering. Whispering, whisper, 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 whispering very close to your left ear. Close to your left ear. Close, 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 close. Across, 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 center. Whispering in the center, moving over to your right ear. I'm whispering close to your right ear. I'm whispering at the microphone. I'm whispering away from the microphone. At the microphone. Away from the microphone. Moving across, 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 across. Whispering at the microphone. Away from the microphone. At the microphone. center, coming very close, 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 very close indeed, coming back, 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 moving way, 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 way back, way back here, can you still hear me? Maybe you can, you probably should be able to, can you still? Trigger number three is crinkling and keycap sounds. number four. Scissors.
Okay, number five. Tapping. Trigger number six, fuzzy thing, fuzzy thing. First trigger is soft speaking. Soft speaking. Speaking softly in your ear. Right side, right side. Speaking softly in your right ear. Softly, 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 softly. Very, very quietly. Center, center, center. Speaking softly in the center. Softly, 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 speaking softly in your left ear, left ear, speaking softly in your left ear, quiet, 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 back to the center, back to the center, back to your right ear, I'm speaking towards the microphone, towards the microphone, away from the microphone, away from the microphone, Towards the microphone, away from the microphone, back, center, 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 over to the left ear, speaking towards the microphone, away from the microphone, towards the microphone, away from the microphone, back to the center, let's get really close, 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 very close, I'm speaking softly, close to you, very close indeed. Now let's back up, back, 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 way back here, all the way back, using all the space I've got, speaking very, very far away, but still softly, coming closer, 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 back in the center. Trigger number two is 
whispering, whispering, whispering very close, 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 close to your left ear, close to your left ear, center, 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 center. I'm whispering in the center now, very close to your face, right in the middle. Now we're going to go right, 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 right. Now I'm speaking, whispering. Center, 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 center. Back to your left ear. Whisper, whisper, whisper. I'm whispering towards the microphone. I'm whispering away from the microphone. I'm whispering towards the microphone and away from the microphone. Back, 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 back to the center. Over to your right ear. I'm whispering towards the microphone. the microphone and away from the microphone very close 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 in the center very 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 close maybe too close let's back up back 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 all the way back all the way back can you hear me from way back here even though I'm whispering you should be able to I think you should be able to but we'll find out we listen back to these recordings. Coming closer, 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 right back to where I started whispering. Trigger number three is keycap sounds. Keycap. Trigger number four is scissors, scissors. Trigger number five is tapping.
trigger number six is fuzzy thing. Fuzzy thing. So, you've now had the chance to listen to a variety of tingly, 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 tingly ASMR triggers going ear to ear all around your head, recorded using both my Rode microphones and the Fifine K678 microphones. And now it's your chance to guess which set of triggers you thought was recorded with a which microphone. The first set, do you think that was the K678? Or the second set, do you think that was the K678? I'll give you, I don't know, a few seconds here to think about it. Don't cheat now, don't skip ahead. Maybe if you want for posterity, you can put your answer down in the comments before you, uh, you listen to what I have to say next. Okay, are you ready for the answer? Drum roll, please. It was the second set of triggers that I recorded with the K678. So the first set of triggers were recorded with my Rode NT1A microphones. The second set was recorded with the pair of K678s. Did you guess it right? Or did you get bamboozled by the K678s? Let me know down below. Listening to it myself, I have to say I think that the difference is fairly apparent, but largely it comes down to self-noise. Again, the Rode microphones are so, so quiet. They have such low self-noise. The K678s are no slouch in that regard either, but I find the soft noise to be a little bit more audible than the roads. That being said, I will stress again that the K678s are less than half the price of the roads, and being USB microphones, you can just plug them straight into your computer, whereas with the roads, you need an interface of some kind to record from them or plug them in or, or whatever. So, anyway, uh, that was the can you determine which is which sound test. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stack up the K678s against their arch rival. Let's go give that a listen. And of course, no review of a microphone of this type would be complete without comparing it against the mighty Blue Yeti microphone which you're hearing me speak through right now. The Blue Yeti is kind of the incumbent champion amongst many streamers 
and podcasters. It is very, very popular and has been for a long time, and with good reason. It's very well made, it sounds really, really good, and it's quite versatile. It has a lot of different recording modes and such. It is a very good microphone at its price point, and it is really the mic to beat for a lot of reasons. I'm speaking about six inches away from the Blue Yeti right now. I'm recording at 48 kilohertz sample rate and 16-bit uh, bit depth. So you can get a really good feel for what it sounds like. I'm using the monocardioid pickup mode, which is intended for uh, voice work for vocals uh, and most closely matches um, the pickup pattern uh, as seen on the, the K678 that we're reviewing today. So this will hopefully be a very fair comparison. You might hear a bit of white noise in the background. Once again, I'm not treating this audio at all. It's just raw audio coming straight out of the microphone. Uh, the white noise you hear is probably my computer fans. They are very quiet, but they are not silent. And uh, I think they're probably louder than the Yeti's self-noise. So hopefully this little bit has given you a good idea of what the Blue Yeti sounds like so you can compare it against the K678 in just a moment. And now you're hearing me speaking through the Fifine K678. I have it positioned in almost exactly the same spot as the Blue Yeti, just a couple of inches away, so the acoustics should be nearly identical. Like the Blue Yeti, I have it set to record at a 48 kilohertz sampling rate and 16-bit bit depth. That is the highest quality recording that you can get out of the Fifine K678. So from a technical perspective, it's matched with the Yeti's recording and should sound uh, very similar in that regard. Um, of course, I'm only using one of the Cave uh, 678s right now, uh, which is why you're hearing it in mono mode. But for audio uh, voice recording like this, often you do just want a mono signal, just a single channel tends to reduce room noise and that kind of thing. So for podcasting, uh, for streaming, you really want that, uh, that mono um, mode. Uh, it also uses a cardioid pickup pattern, just like uh, I had the Blue Yeti set to moments ago. So this should be a pretty fair comparison. And like uh, I was with the Blue Yeti, I'm speaking about six inches away from the microphone. So any differences you hear right now largely come down to the microphone itself. Any differences you hear in uh, the timbre of my voice, you know, in the, the um, clarity or, or lack thereof. I haven't listened back to this yet, so I'm very curious to see how, or to hear, rather, how it stacks up against the Yeti. And once again, you might hear a bit of white noise. That's, again, probably the fans on my computer. They are very quiet, but they are not silent. And I suspect they are louder than the self-noise of this microphone. So now that you've had a chance to hear both the Yeti and the Fifine K678, it's time to uh, reconvene and... I'll talk a little bit about my experience using the K678 before giving you my pros and cons and my final verdict. All right, so we've done the unboxing. We've done the ASMR trigger test where you got to try and figure out, listen carefully and see if you could determine the difference between the K678 and my Rode NT1As. And then I gave you a little bit of speaking, comparing the mighty Blue Yeti to the K678. Now I'll share some of my thoughts and experiences using the K678, let you know kind of how I felt about it. So 
uh, right off the bat, I will say I am once again really impressed with the sound quality coming out of this microphone. Uh, it sounds very flattering for vocals. Uh, there's a nice resonant bass to it and excellent clarity. I would say the clarity of the K678 uh, really is striking, um, but it's not harsh, you know, it's not a very sibilant sound. It's just a nice, clean, crisp sound, well supported by um, sort of a lower mid-range. Uh, in fact, in the listening test with the Blue Yeti, compared to the K678, I honestly have to give it to the K678. I think that in its, you know, mono cardioid pickup pattern mode, the only one that the K678 offers, I think it sounds better than the Blue Yeti, at least for voices, for vocals. I will say that the K678 does have uh, more self noise, sort of a higher noise floor uh, than do the Rode microphones that you're, you're listening to right now. Um, and I mentioned that a little bit earlier. That comes as no surprise whatsoever. Uh, the Rode microphones, the NT1As, are renowned for incredibly low self noise. And so it's pretty hard to beat that, uh, especially at a much lower price point like that of the K678. Uh, I also did think that the K678 had a bit of trouble um, resolving the stereo image properly. I had to tweak the audio a little bit to the balance between the left and right channels in post. I didn't do any equalizing or anything. I just changed the... the um, not the fader, the balance, I guess, between left and right, to get it to sound more properly even between the ears. Um, and so it's possible that they're just not very well uh, matched, the two K678s that I got. Um, and of course, it's not like Five Fine is selling them as a matched pair or anything like that. So the response from one to the next can be different and probably is a little bit, and that's probably some of what we were hearing there. But again, I will stress the fact that the K678 is not made for pairing and doing stereo recording with. You can, but that's not what it's intended for. Its intended use is for streamers, podcasters, content creators, YouTubers, you know, uh, who uh, just need a single mono channel and who want to sound good in their recordings. And in that regard, I think the K678 succeeds uh, quite spectacularly. It does sound really good and professional and quite flattering for my male voice. I suspect it would sound good for higher register voices as well. Uh, another thing that really stands out to me about the K678 is the build quality. My gosh, that is a solid, solid microphone. Yeah, people laud the Blue Yeti for its incredibly solid build. The K678 is right up there with the Yeti, if not more solid. It's very heavy, very solidly made. However, not all is uh, gumdrops and rainbows. Uh, there are a couple of shortcomings with this microphone. One of them is that the audio jack, the... Um, uh, zero latency audio jack that you can listen through. It works fine for monitoring. It is zero latency, but I wouldn't use it for regular listening. Uh, there's a fair bit of noise that comes through on there, just white noise. The noise floor is relatively high, and uh, it just doesn't sound great to listen to music and stuff through that audio jack, honestly. Um, I found... Um, music on that I was listening to on Spotify to sound very cold and uh, weirdly harsh and sibilant, especially uh, in the treble register. And, um, and, and higher pitched voices really came through as sibilant and uh, the bass lacked definition and punchiness. So uh, I wouldn't use it as my primary listening device, but luckily that's not really what it's for. Um, what else do I want to say? I will say that 
uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that it only records in 16-bit bit depth. It can't do 24-bit because uh, one of its prime competitors, the Yeti Nano, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, um, it can do 48 kilohertz 24-bit recording. It would have been nice to see Fifine include that feature here uh, with uh, the K678. Not a deal breaker by any stretch, but uh, still a little bit unfortunate. So uh, the only other thing that I thought was a bummer, really, was that it doesn't have a height adjustable stand. That one stand you get is what you're stuck with. Now it does have um, a shock mount, a threaded shock mount um, uh, mount spot. <laughs> Um, which would let you mount it on something else, uh, and you know, on a boom arm, for instance, a shock mount on a boom arm. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be using this for uh, streaming and stuff, you probably want to do that anyway. But um, it is just a bummer that the cheaper model from Fifine, the K670, actually came with a, admittedly kind of janky height adjustable stand where you can screw in more sections to raise the height off the desk. And the K678, which is 20 or 30 bucks more, doesn't come with any kind of height adjustability. So, uh, I think that's about everything I have to say about my experience testing and uh, using the K678. So, uh, now that I've talked at your face for a while, I'm going to talk at your face for a few more moments, but I'm going to summarize the pros and the cons of this microphone before giving you my final verdict. And you guys know me, I'm a positive kind of guy, so let's start over here with the pros, the things I liked quite a bit about Fifine's K678 microphone. The first thing that really stands out is the exceptional build quality. This thing is built like a tank. I don't think it'll ever break on you. It is made of solid metal all the way through. It is thick and heavy and just really, really well built. It feels like quality. The second thing that's really positive about this microphone is the audio quality. Uh, it has great clarity and a very flattering tone for voices. So I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with the sound coming out of this microphone. Uh, and on a related note, it has, although some audible self-noise, it's reasonably low. And for most applications, maybe outside of ASMR at least, uh, I think it does a really, really great job. Um, I, and I did notice that, I, at least to my ear, it had less self-noise than did its predecessor, uh, the K670. So... Overall, I would say this is a step up from the K670 in terms of audio quality, and I, I even think it sounds better, a bit brighter and clearer than the Mighty Blue Yeti, its great uh, contender, um, which is, you know, actually a significantly more expensive microphone, too. So, uh, really good report on the audio quality front. A couple of other strong points are the fact that it has that zero latency audio monitoring jack. Great for monitoring, not so great for listening to music and stuff through. The output is not the highest quality, but uh, good for, for monitoring. Also really happy to see uh, hardware controls for both volume and gain, which uh, the gain control is actually lacking on the cheaper model, the K670, so it's nice to see the inclusion of the gain knob, uh, as well as a hardware mute button. And finally, if you register through Fifine's website, the K678 is eligible for a two-year warranty, which is better than the standard one-year you see on many such products. Uh, so props to Fifine for backing this up for two years. The K678 is not without its shortcomings, however, so I do have some cons to mention here. The first is that it lacks a height adjustable stand, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, and to be fair, a lot of the competition is in a similar boat, such as the Blue Yeti. That stand is not height adjustable. Nevertheless, it was a little bit disappointing to see the 
K670, the cheaper model, uh, come with a height adjustable stand, uh, whereas the K678 that we reviewed here has no such thing. Uh, I was also a little bit disappointed to see that uh, it only has 16-bit uh, bit depth recording as opposed to 24-bit recording. Um, this is specifically in the context of some strong competitors like the Yeti Nano, which is only about $10 or 20, 10 to $20 more expensive. Um, so it would have been nice to see Fifine equip the K678 with 24-bit recording. Another minor drawback of the K678 is the lackluster headphone jack. Now, I did commend it for having a headphone jack at all. It's always nice to have a zero latency monitoring jack, and that's really all you should use this headphone jack for, because for other applications, it just doesn't sound great. Music sounds um, very sibilant through it. The bass is lacking definition and punchiness is just not good for much of anything other than monitoring as you're recording. Another very minor but worth, you know, worth noting <laughs> drawback is the LED. I didn't mention this before, but the LED on the mute button, by default when you're recording it's green, you press it, the button, uh, it turns red to let you know you're muted, is very bright. <laughs> especially on that green color. It's actually so bright, I found it a bit distracting sometimes. Um, so that's a funny thing to pick out, but that LED was just a little bit too bright for me. It seemed just a bit too much. And finally, what is perhaps the most significant drawback of the K678 is actually its price. Coming in at around 80 US dollars, it loses the great advantage of its predecessor, the K670. The K670 came in at around the $50 price point. That is solidly within the budget range. The K678 at 80 bucks is pushing up into uh, more premium ranges occupied by, as I keep saying, microphones like the, the Yeti Nano. Uh, or the Blue Yeti, um, and those microphones have some advantages over the K678, whether it's 24-bit uh, recording for the Nano, or whether it's um, a plethora of different pickup patterns for the Yeti, for instance. The Yeti is so versatile in that regard with its stereo and omnidirectional and uh, directionally, you know, uh, opposed or mono uh, pickup patterns, so... Um, in that regard, uh, it's unfortunate that the K678 is priced where it is, because the competition is very stiff indeed. So, after all of that, what is my final verdict on Fifine's K678 microphone? Well, if you're simply looking for a mono microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern, for streaming, or podcasting, or recording YouTube videos, or whatever, then the K678 is a very strong contender. It's built like a tank. The thing is incredibly well made, and it has very good audio quality that's very flattering for voices, makes them sound rich and clear. And at 80 or so US dollars, I think that it is priced competitively against some of its biggest um, rivals, such as the Yeti Nano and the Blue Yeti. But it does also lack a few features compared to those more expensive microphones. It's only got a 16-bit recording, uh, and it only has the one pickup pattern. Uh, as opposed to something like the Blue Yeti, which has a whole variety to choose from, including a stereo pickup pattern. And that might be the greatest advantage of the Blue Yeti for an ASM artist. Uh, if you are a budding ASM artist, you're looking to pick up one microphone that does it all. The Yeti has always been and still remains an excellent option. And it simply doesn't seem economical to me to, say, pick up a pair 
of Fifine K678 to use because you're going to be paying more and it's less convenient because you've got two mics to deal with now. Of course, it does offer a bit more flexibility in that you can move them apart, move them together, you can rotate them to change the, the sound of the stereo audio as you please. So maybe some people do prefer the modularity of two individual microphones, but overall I would say that Fifine's K670 is best for exactly what it was originally intended for, which was not ASMR, of course, but for streaming, for YouTube, for podcasting, for recording your voice and creating content. And in that context, at the $80 price point, I think Fifine's K678 is a very strong contender. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of yet another relaxing review. Special thanks, of course, to Fifine for sending over the pair of K678 microphones that we looked at and listened to here today. And if you're interested in picking up the K678, there are a couple of links down below the video in the video description. One for Amazon, where it's available for 83 US dollars, and a link to the page direct on Fifine's website where you can buy it, and they have a 5% off coupon for you there to bring the price down a little bit below $80. So if you're interested in checking out this microphone, those are the places to do it. And of course, special thanks to each and every one of you guys for watching. I hope you found this informative, and I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.